What's up summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides Wild Rift video. I'm Kangas and today we're showing you the best champions to main for patch 2.2a. If you're eager to invest some time into champions that will help you climb, then these are hands down the best for you. So hit that sub button and let's get right into it. Let's start the list off with a champ that shouldn't surprise anybody, Katarina. For now, there are no nerfs on the radar for this champion, and she is an absolute monster. This champion shines in teamfights, and patiently waiting for your moment to make your appearance is the most important quality you need to play the character. She is a champion that requires you to have immaculate decision making. Look at a fight, spot the enemy champions that are dangerous for you, and wait patiently for them to use their CC abilities. In her laning phase, you'll quickly realize that she cannot do too much before hitting level 3. Upon reaching level 3, Katarina can look for some fast trades for clearing the wave in a super fast manner, unless it's a cannon wave. But don't worry, the hardest part in the game is the laning phase. You just gotta sit back and wait until you hit your required levels. But once you hit level 5, you can easily annihilate any squishy champion that happens to face track you. And trust me, it gets even better. If you're already able to one-shot squishies without even being ahead, what do you think you can do when you're fed? Oh boy, let me tell you this. That champion just deals way too much damage and is way too fast for a mobile game. And once you've mastered the use of her third ability, enemies will find it very hard to even track your movements. It's even possible to bait important enemy cooldowns by dancing in front of them and then you just jump away. Another thing that basically goes for any assassin, you're not supposed to just sit in your lane. Make sure you go roam and make use of your powerful burst capabilities. With this, you're not only snowballing yourself, but also helping out your team a lot. By putting them in a strong position, they'll prove to be more valuable in objective-oriented fights, which are apart from catching somebody walking into places where they shouldn't be, that's your area of expertise. It might take some time to get used to her fast and abrupt movements, but it will be more than worth the effort. And before we get on to our second pick in the video, make sure that you go check out our community discord in the description below. We run all kinds of giveaways, sometimes have fun events, and everybody in there is super friendly, except when Nate turns them against me, but that's its own separate thing. Anyway, come join the fam. Alright, so next up on the list is Akali for the Baron lane. We cannot stress this enough, but this champion is the bane of Baron laners. Akali is a champion that shares the same assassin identity as Katarina, but there is one major game changing difference about Akali's early game. In lane, she can assert dominance by using her first ability, proper movement, and auto attacks. With the slow and absurd damage values of this sequence, there's not really much that can fight her head on. The most important part about playing Akali is knowing your damage. As an assassin, it's necessary to be acquainted with your all-in potential. In other game titles, we usually call this scene lethal. By using the pressure of your level 1, you can create a situation where you set up lethal on your opponent. It's very likely for you to deal a huge chunk of damage level 1, but it's not that likely that you actually kill the enemy. However, with the damage done, you've created pressure. The enemy is now forced to make a decision. Go base and lose minions or XP, or stay and get killed once overstepping slightly. Similar to a Katarina, it's not a good time for any of your enemies once you're ahead. In fights, you want to look for enemy carries and take them out first. Thanks to your overtuned damage numbers, it's going to be more easy than you think. Contrary to Katarina though, there's little that can actually stop you from getting to the enemy carries. Utilizing your movement spells as well as your shroud to cover your motives is often enough to bamboozle your enemies. More than that, since you're stealth, there's only a few select champions that can try to CC you with their AoE abilities. And keep in mind, it's not even guaranteed that they hit those, and once they're on cooldown, it's going to make the fight even easier for you and your team. Alright, halfway through the list, it's time for our question of the day. What is your current main champion and why? I honestly wasn't loving support these past couple weeks, but I've been playing it again, and actually my main is currently Braum. I know I know everybody assumes that I main him anyway, but I actually don't play him that much, but I think right now he's really good in the meta. With a lot of teams that want to jump into you, it feels amazing to have that unbreakable shield, reliable CC, and just be a sturdy frontline to peel for your carries. But let me know your answers in the comments down below, I'm always curious what you think. Another champion that's most definitely worth maining is Zaya. She deals an obscene amount of damage by utilizing her feathers in a teamfight. And compared to other AD carries, she also has one very unique trait that not many others have. Her zone control, thanks to the feathers, is just unmatched. The moment any enemy recklessly walks into a lot of those, they're gonna regret it. Only champions like Brahm and Yasuo who can actively delete projectiles are a nuisance to deal with, but everyone else is free pickings. But the great part about Zaya is, just like other AD carries, you can, like the name suggests, carry. ADCs are the most consistent damage on a team compared to all the other classes because their damage primarily comes from their auto attacks. Consequently, they're only cooldown dependent for specific purposes. Compare this to something like a Ziggs who doesn't really damage you after they use all their abilities. But on the other hand, an AD carry will still deal more than enough damage to you regardless of the availability of cooldowns. 
For Zaya, it's very important to realize the two modes you can play in. On one mode, you have the offensive option, where you're pushing forward. With the power of your auto attacks and the safety given from your ultimate ability, we can play on a knife's edge. On the other hand, we have to understand when to enter defensive mode. In this mode, we're primarily peeling back while shooting our feathers at our opponents. By doing so, we're forcing them to move away from the feathers, behind them, or just risk being destroyed. To reach peak performance with this champion, you have to kind of memorize where you leave your feathers. And more than that, don't shy away from using your third ability as a means to poke. Even without it, you're still a major threat to the enemy team. But of course, if the enemy has champions that can punish that, you'd need to be a little more disciplined with that trigger finger. But the real secret if you want to make the best out of laning is you need to learn Zaya's unique passive. After using a spell, your next auto attacks are empowered and shoot out feathers in a straight line through your target. So when you're last hitting minions, you can actually reposition yourself in a way that you can poke the enemy through the minions. Especially poke damage can become super vital to your laning phase. To deal some good chip damage, use your first ability, auto attack once, and pull back your feather with your third ability. And if you spot a situation where you can get use out of quick rooting them, you can also start the trade with your second ability, an auto attack, your first ability, and lastly your third. With this, you can even set up plays for your team to collapse on, so be creative with these plays. Every lesson learned is a valuable asset in the future. And for the support role, I'm giving you all a spicier one. By just don't need a main Alistair or Braum, you just get an easy to pilot champion and don't really gain too much by putting effort into learning them. Yet there is a champion that scales very much with your ability of playing her. I'm talking about Janna. It might seem a little weird that I straight up advise you to play Janna, but trust me, here's why. Janna as a champion can actually just solo carry team fights. Prior to this segment, I spoke about the meta being about champions that want to go in. As a champion, Janna naturally just denies most of these engages simply by being a good player. Her first ability and her ultimate ability both deny champions that want to jump onto you. However, you need to be aware of that and react quick enough. Keep in mind, you're relatively squishy even if you run the Ardent Sensor Rod of Ages build. But the real gem in here is the common misconception of Janna being a passive support. If you're playing this champion, you can actually play her absurdly aggressively as long as you know her limits. In lane, you want to swap modes between perma pushing and poking depending on what your jungler needs from you. More than that, you can actively fish for tornadoes by using Fog of War to your advantage. Being hit by a fully charged tornado, Zephyr, and an auto attack is pretty much minus 50% for most supports. But what does she do if she's facing champions like Galio and Alistair? Well, that's also pretty easy. Make sure that you're using your first ability correctly. If you want to poke them with auto attacks and your second ability, you have to place your first ability below you as an insurance. Once you see that they're starting an animation, just tap your first ability again and they will get cancelled. Now with all their stuff on cooldown, you can poke them even more. And never forget that your first ability is your lifeline in lane. Once on cooldown, you're vulnerable, so be aware of that and back off play safe. For team fights, your primary job is to peel your carries as well as you can. The enemy will find it really hard to kill your carries if you're still alive, and that means that you're doing your job properly. More than that, you can grant your team a lot of extra stats by purchasing Ardent Sensor right after your Redemption Boot Enchant. Since your ultimate ability affects all allies in its range, it's going to buff all of them with the bonus stats from Ardent Sensor. Jan is really good, but you need to realize she's also one of the hardest champions to play in the game correctly. Realizing what you have to do in a fight and how to properly execute it are very hard concepts to learn. In addition to that, if you ever mess up, you're so squishy that you're probably just dead. The cool thing though is that mastering this champ makes sure that you're growing as a player, because you're able to take these newly acquired concepts and transition them to other roles as well. So test out Janna. It's really fun to make the enemy team mauled, even though it won't be super easy to learn her, but we can also help you out with that if you check out our support guide. You'll get a lot of help and pointers as to what to focus on and do in a game, so take a look, I'm sure it'll pay off. And last on the list is the jungle position. You've heard this name a lot and you'll keep on hearing his name until he's nerfed. Lee Sin is still a champion that most players dread. His superior early game presence is obnoxious to deal with, so you'll see most good junglers simply try to avoid an early skirmish with him. But keep in mind, if most of High Diamond still dies to a Lee Sin invade, how do you think it looks for lower ranks? As a champion, Lee Sin has insane mobility because he can dash to thin air with his second ability now. More so, his ability to stick to his opponents is unmatched because he can slow them, tag them, and dash to them once again. In addition to that, his damage is enhanced by his attack speed steroid from his passive ability. Killing your opponents is what Lee Sin loves to do, and putting the opposition into the dirt is his signature move, and similar to Assassin's is that once he's already ahead, he just gotta run circles around you. So the reason I think you should main this champion is the reward for putting effort into learning him. With more time spent on honing mechanics, you can do so much more in the early stages of the game and get your team to snowball. If you're interested in learning this champion, I can recommend that you try playing aggressive. You have to learn about the limits and how you can punish enemy champions for being weaker than you are. Playing Lee Sin like a Shyvana ain't gonna get you anywhere. Your champion doesn't have that innate scaling that others have, so hop into Wild Rift, play aggressive, and see what you can do. 
And there you go, the best champions for you to main on the current patch. We know the meta has been feeling a bit stale with a lot of champions played over and over again, so we try picking a few that aren't permalocked in every single game. Thanks so much for watching everybody, make sure to check out our Discord as well as sharing your reply to the question of the day in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, also sub to the channel so that you never miss any of our uploads again. That's it for today, so as always, best of luck on the Rift, stay hydrated, and I'll see you next time.